In April of 1865, Captain James Mason pulled his steamboat, the SS Sultana, into port in Vicksburg, Mississippi, in search of a boiler repairman. One of his four steam boilers was leaking, an extensive repair that the man told him would take some time to perform. Captain Mason did not have the time. He was waiting precious cargo, Union soldiers and officers that were being released from Confederate prison camps at the end of the Civil War. For each soldier returned, the captain of the ship they were on would earn monetary compensation, and Captain Mason had his eye on as many soldiers as the Sultana could hold. He told the repairman to simply patch the leak and forego all other repairs. He believed his boilers would make it the rest of the way. It is unknown how many people were on the Sultana, a steamboat meant to carry 376 people maximum. The records estimate as many as 2,500. The deck was so heavy that the wood was bowing under the weight, though Captain Mason sailed on. Around 2 a.m., that leaky boiler gave way, exploding and triggering two others to do the same. Instantly, the wooden vessel morphed into an inferno, claiming as many as 1,700 lives. To this day, this is the worst maritime disaster to have occurred in the history of the United States. Though very few have ever heard of it, because it occurred the same week that President Abraham Lincoln's assassin had been found. Engineering disasters like the SS Sultana occur daily, though not all are as catastrophic as others. Some can be attributed to math or science gone wrong, but I like to believe these are even more so due to human faults falling into what I like to call the five deadly engineering sins. One, blatant miscommunication. Two, an overabundance of pride. Three, negligence, especially a distaste for needed maintenance. Four, rampant greed. And five, ignorance. I've always taken pride in being an engineer who can communicate. I feel as though my love for writing, whether it be creative fiction or journalism, has translated well to test methods, lab reports, and meeting minutes. My extroverted nature when I speak and my theatrical background have never failed me when addressing a crowd or simply a project team. In fact, it's been my dream since I was 12 years old to give a TED Talk, and I'm very honored to be speaking to you all tonight. I feel as though these written and verbal communication skills I possess allow me to gravitate towards positions of project leadership. And it makes me curious as to how these soft skills, or as they should be called, power skills, so greatly impact the field of engineering. Because if these skills are so soft, how do they have the ability to cause a catastrophic failure? So it was the SS Sultana disaster and others that I studied as a Tulsa Undergraduate Research Challenge, or Turk Scholar, under my mentor, Dr. John Henshaw, where we explored engineering disasters, how they happened, and what we can learn from them. Engineers are, as Dr. Henshaw always says, worst-case scenario people. And it is from our worst moments that we can grow the most from. The SS Sultana failed in a time when steamboats were made without any rules or regulations. Its failure encouraged the founding of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, or ASME, and the boiler code regulations in the ASME Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code, which is law today in 49 of the 50 states and all provinces of Canada. I found myself sorting these disasters on the side into what became the five deadly engineering sins. These human faults, if recognized, would have had the ability to prevent a disaster. Arguably, miscommunication is the most important, irreversible human fault of an engineer. The side effects can be minimal, such as not letting your customer be updated in a timely manner, or the side effects can be disastrous. In 2018, at Florida International University, a brand new pedestrian bridge collapsed on a busy highway, resulting in six deaths and numerous injuries. Cracks in the concrete bridge have been detected days in advance by workers, but when the news was reported, it was simply handed off from one person to another. By the time the news had actually made it to someone who could make a difference, the bridge had already collapsed. Written and verbal communication is a prime skill for an engineer to have, 
the ability to explain your ideas cohesively and effectively so that someone may review and comment appropriately as well as in a timely manner. You must know how to ask questions, report your findings, and work with those around you to be successful when faced with a challenge. Because engineering is a team sport that can only be successful when everyone is on the same page, something achieved through direct communication. Some faults, on the other hand, fall to an overabundance of pride, believing that there is no way the design you made could possibly fail. When the Quebec Bridge was being constructed, the engineers had a lot of pride in their design because renowned bridge engineer Theodore Cooper was overseeing their project. Yet the bridge collapsed not once, but twice in the early 1900s. This stresses the importance of peer review, of taking pride out of the picture to have someone else look at your design. Because someone may catch on to something that no one else has yet. It's all a matter of perspective. Once these designs are in action, though, it is critical to not allow the faults of negligence to take over by not maintaining the final product. Every engineer will tell you that maintenance is not as fun as building something new, but it is just as important. The failed lap splice joints in the Aloha 243 regional aircraft that ripped a portion of the fuselage off mid-air may have been noticed if thorough maintenance checks were done. Instead, workers would go out with flashlights quickly before the sun rose to examine the plane before takeoff, not giving the action as much time and attention as it deserved. Many things can be done to encourage better maintenance checks, such as incentives or allowing creativity in the process. Sustaining engineering is so important in the product life cycle, making sure that once your product is on the market, it is maintaining a good rapport. When a problem is approached, it is the job of the engineer to come up with a solution so that that product can continue sustaining. Now, sometimes these failures occur due to rampant greed, where with each design completed, the payday gets more impressive. In manufacturing theory, it is well known that the faster your production rate, the more parts you can make for profit. But integrity of manufacturing cannot be sacrificed for a payoff. Imagine what would have happened if Captain Mason was not so insistent on a paycheck. He would have taken the time to get the boilers repaired. He would have not have overloaded the steamboat with soldiers. Safety would have been maintained. We cannot let rampant greed get the best of us. Instead, we must pace ourselves. There will always be a paycheck to pursue. Though some faults occur out of pur pure ignorance, we do not know everything, and there is new engineering theory being discovered every day. When the Silver Bridge collapsed in 1967, it came as a shock to everyone. No one believed it would collapse. It was unique in every sense, utilizing high-strength steel and a non-redundant eye-bar design, an overall cheaper project with less material and manufacturing required. But if the engineers would have considered fracture mechanics in their design, they would have known that their steel of choice was far too brittle and susceptible to disaster to make a bridge out of less material rather than more. But fracture mechanics, the study of what material properties are best to avoid cracking, was in its infancy, and no one knew to consider this. In a way, we as engineers must be able to predict the future so that our designs and ideas can change with the times. Change starts with recognition of the problem. And by recognizing these five deadly engineering sins, we can check our own engineering to guarantee we are operating at our best. By knowing these human faults, we can open new horizons to mitigate future disasters. As an undergraduate mechanical engineering student, I appreciate how much group projects are encouraged in class so that we have to learn how to work with different people. I appreciate how we are moving towards conference and technical writing. We also have programs such as Make a Difference Engineering and Engineers Without Borders, where you can see the product lifecycle from brainstorming to delivery. As president of the Society of Women Engineers, a role I am incredibly proud of, I encourage the mentoring and networking of undergraduates 
so that they may learn from the accomplishments and challenges of others. But there is always more to learn when it comes to changing your mindset. And engineers of the future must obtain the power skills necessary to combat these human faults. Engineers have a tendency to steer clear of the liberal arts, perpetuating stereotypes that engineers can't present or engineers can't communicate. When I told people I wanted to be an engineer, some were surprised because of how social I am. But I encourage the pursuit of the liberal arts. Yes, even as an engineer, because it's my love for creative writing that aids in my communication. It's my history in the performing arts that allows me to speak to you tonight. Engineers must obtain these power skills, because even if we do the math correctly, if we do not consider the human aspect of engineering, we will be failed by our designs. Thank you.